Greetings, Team Ajilam. Karibuni sana tena to yet another episode of Hearing and Obeying God, Part 2. Part 2. We started last week um, speaking about the fact that part of being able to hear God's voice comes from intimacy with God and spending time in fellowship with Him. And that when we spend time in fellowship with Him, that through that we're able to nurture the ability for us to be able to hear and discern His voice. And so we talked about that last week. And so this week, today, what we're going to do, and I want to just get right into it, right, is that what I want us to be able to do is to look at some of the many ways through which God speaks to us. We're going to look at... uh, nine different ways actually (laughs) like nine different ways in which um god speaks to us and um let's get into it yes yes now number one of the way in which god speaks to us is number one is through his written word which we call the logos the logos the written word now this is one of the main ways through which God speaks to us, but it's not the only way. You know, the thing about God's written word is that it allows us to be able to distinguish a lie from the truth. One of the things that's very interesting that you'll see from Matthew 4 is that when Jesus is being tempted by the devil and when he's in the wilderness being tempted by the devil, one of the ways, not one of the ways, the way in which he responds to the temptations that the devil brings before him is that he begins to, he says to the devil, it is written, it is written. And one of the ways in which we, God speaks to us is through his written word. It allows us to be able to distinguish and understand what is a lie and what is the truth. It allows us to be able to build up our discernment and be able to discern what it is that is true and what is false right so meaning that his written word is one of the ways in which he speaks to us his word does not contradict him he does not uh, god doesn't contradict his word right and so for example one of the many ways in which the enemy lies to us and he does this oftentimes this is one of his most popular ways in which he he lies to to believers is through condemnation right and where he comes and he gives you this you know you you typically what happens is that when you sin or you make a mistake or you do something where the voice of condemnation comes and is super loud right and so this super loud voice of condemnation where the enemy at this point takes on the you know takes us on this ride of guilt and shame and 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 loves for to uh, for us to just kind of sit and stay in guilt and shame for as long as we can because as long as we stay in guilt and shame during that time when we're in guilt and shame it means that we're alienated from god right we we alienate ourselves from god and he will say things to you and, and give you all these thoughts in your head about you know how you know god will never forgive you for what you just did you are so terrible how can how is it that you could do what it is that you just did you have to pay for your mistakes you're gonna to have to pay for all your mistakes and I don't know if, I don't even know if you can recover how you will be able to recover so these are some of the voices of condemnation that come and the goal of the enemy is to cause you to stay in this place so that you can be uh, drawn away from God for as long as possible because when you're drawn away from God that's when now he can continue to just bandika even more things right so now all of a sudden it's like some childhood issues that come up all these different things because you're in this space now the thing is about the written word about scripture is that when we read and understand and believe the scriptures what it does is that it would remind us for example in a place of condemnation where it says in first john 1 9 that if we confess our sins that he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness which means that when we understand the kind of grace that we have received and that is written about towards us and we begin to believe in that then this is God basically speaking into our situation and us being able to pull up out of that situation that we're in of condemnation. This this is something that is just so, so major keys where it's like when we begin to believe God's written word, it allows us to be able to use that word for so many different situations and so many things that the enemy will come and throw our way. Amen. 
And so through scripture, we'd be able to know what the truth is, what the truth is in a given situation, what God's position is in any given situation. And in the position of where it is that we are falling, we know that God's position is, is when we fall, that if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, one of the things that's, this is kind of like a crazy story. I, I've been a believer for a very long time, from 21 years, I think. And the thing is, is that during that time, I've seen some very crazy stuff. One of the things that I have seen with my own two eyes is uh, I've seen someone uh, possessed by demons. <laughs> it's not the most, uh, I would not encourage anyone to, to say anything like that. But anyway, so I've seen it before. So I was in the presence of someone who was... Uh, demon possessed and the demons were manifesting themselves right and what this person was doing during that time and they had been told to do this is that they were reading scripture and as they were reading the scripture so the person is reading scripture oh man this is so crazy <laughs> this is such a crazy story ah! anyway so as they're reading the scripture so i'm seated there across this person watching them do this so as they're reading the scripture ah oh, i can hear the demons talking to each other so there was a couple of them and it's so funny because they had different voices and there was one that was speaking in kikuyu <laughs> and then there's another talking in english and there was one in swahili that like they even had different languages super weird anyway as this person was reading the scripture one i heard one of the demons saying to the other one how does she know this who's telling her these things so as the person is reading and and so for me what, what that has always stuck with me i was really young when this happened and what that that really stuck with me because it, it's one of those things that made me realize it was like that matthew 4 experience where literally the way that jesus combats the enemy is through the written word and literally knowing god's written word is such a powerful tool against the lies of the enemy Right? And so this is one of the ways in which God speaks to us is through his written word. Right? And the thing that is so beautiful, beautiful about the written word, it's not even just in regards to dealing with the enemy. Right? It's not just about dealing with the enemy. It says here that, you know, that God literally speaks to us through his word. In, in 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 20, it says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. What this means is that every time you see a promise in God's word, we can claim it in Jesus Christ. Anytime you see a promise in the word of God, this is God speaking to us. Where it literally says here that no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so what we see is that when we read the scriptures and we begin to now proactively look at the promises of God in scripture and begin to claim those promises and declare those promises, they are yes in Christ Jesus. That God through his word speaks to us in perpetuity. Like this is now God's voice in perpetuity, right? And so when you see a promise in the word of God, you know, claim it for yourself as this is part of your inheritance that you have received in Christ Jesus, right? Where if he has said it, then it is for us and it is ours to claim. How dope is that? You know what I mean? Like it allows us to be able to combat the enemy, but it also allows us to be able to understand what it is that God wants for our lives, what he wants to give to us, what promises that he wants us to be able to take hold of. And this he does through his written word. Hey man, the second thing is, is how God speaks to us is through his Rema word. Now Rema, Rema is different from Logos. Logos is written word. Rema is a word in season. Yani ikop. It's a, a, a word that is, that, is, that is live, that is alive and for that very specific moment. And I don't know if this has ever happened to you where you'll be going through a certain situation and a very specific portion of scripture will, will come into your mind. Or you, you'll be going through a specific situation and you'll read a portion of scripture and it'll just speak potently into a specific situation that you're going through. That is what is called Rema word. Rema word is active and very present at that very moment, right? This happens to me a lot where it's like I'll be going through a certain situation and 
God will just drop like a scripture into my mind. And even times you have to go and Google like, what the, where is that scripture? You know, it's just like, you don't know where it came from, but that now is what they call the Rema word. The word that is just, that comes specifically for a specific situation that you're going through at that very moment where God will drop a certain portion of scripture to you that would speak to a very specific situation that you may be encountering. This is what we call the Rema word, and this is how God speaks to us. Now, another th- a third way through which God speaks to us, and this is one of the ones that, to me, is um, one that I think many of us experience, but we are not cognizant of. And the third thing that I, I'm calling it repetition. Now, the thing with repetition is that for the most part, many of us think of these things as coincidences. We'd be like, wow, what a coincidence, right? So let me give an example. So let's say you go and you meet with um, someone random and you're having a conversation and they mention Sarah. They mention the name of Sarah and you're like, oh man, I haven't seen Sarah in years, right? And you're just like, okay, cool, whatever. Then the next day, you meet another person completely unrelated to the person that you met the day before and they mention Sarah. And in your mind, you're just like, oh my gosh, what a coincidence. Just yesterday, I was just, someone just mentioned Sarah, right? And you're just like, wow, what a coincidence. And you just continue moving on with your life. The next day comes again, you meet another random person and they mention Sarah this same Sarah that you've had the last two days. And so in your mind, you just keep thinking, my goodness, what a, this is such a strange coincidence that over the last few days, I just keep hearing about this Sarah babe, but then you just continue living your life. Now, the thing that's interesting is, is that when we continue to think of this as a coincidence, what I found most times is that what God does to be able to get our attention towards something is that he will use repetition, where you will see this thing time and time and time again, right? That these are not coincidences. This is actually God trying to draw your attention towards something, right? And usually, like, for example, in the Sarah situation, if you are operating from a place where you're like, God is trying to show me or trying to grab my attention towards something, the natural response for you would have be, would be something like, actually, you know what? This Sarah name keeps coming up. Let me call Sarah. And so you call Sarah and you end up having some, one of the most divine experiences ever, but it's simply because you chose not to look at that situation as a coincidence, but you said, decided to respond to it. And what, what's really interesting is that you see this a lot even, even in, um, if you remember from the Acts series in Acts 10, where um, what happens is that it's a story of Peter and Cornelius. And so what happens is that there's this vision that Peter sees. And so he, when he sees this vision, the thing that is so interesting, and it's almost in a way of how God is able, this is how he signs off on his things, is that he shows this vision to Peter repeatedly. So Peter continually sees this vision until he actions this thing so that when the actual thing happens he's like oh my goodness i would seen this vision but god it's actually says in the scripture that he that 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 he saw this vision multiple times he saw this vision three times right so he saw this vision multiple times three times that's when he saw this vision and be, when he saw this vision it was one of those things where it was god basically confirming to him that he is the one who is speaking to him man my friends i can't tell you how many times like i i, I personally no longer treat anything like a coincidence, right? Whenever I see repetition, I always pay attention and I'm always just kind of like, okay, God is trying to say something here to me. And the only way that you're able to then follow through on that is by actually actioning the thing that you're seeing. So in the case of Sarah, like actually doing something about it, being like, let me call this person and just, because I keep seeing them or let me go and do this action because i keep seeing this thing over and over again so it's god trying to tell me something and it's god trying to get my attention towards something right so it's the same thing like i remember even the time when i told you guys about my trip to malindi it was the same thing like i literally would see saw the same thing and by the third time i knew when this kind of thing came when the, the third time when i saw it i knew it was like okay God is saying to me to go to the coast. We'll figure out the rest later, but let me just first book. <laughs> let me first figure out which day and whatever and do this thing. And this is how, uh, this is one of the ways in which God speaks to us is that he will, he will show us repetition, right? And we'll see things in, in repetitively. And so it's just for us to be able to pay attention to that. Fourth way in which 
God speaks to us, and my friends, there's many ways. So I'm just mentioning a couple of them, right? There's so many different ways. And the fourth one is visions and dreams, right? And man, I'm telling you, God loves to speak to us in dreams and visions. This is something that he's shown throughout scripture, right? In Acts 2.17, it says that in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams, right? Now, as part of us, our inheritance in Christ Jesus through his Holy Spirit is that God through his Holy Spirit will give us dreams and visions, right? And the thing is for us is that, and again, just like the thing about coincidence, is not for us to be able to be like, oh, what a coincidence. It's for us to be able to recognize that there's so many different ways in which God speaks to us and this is also one of them. Where there are times where he will specifically show you something in a dream in order to be able to get your attention towards something, right? And so this has happened to me very many times where in a dream, um, Anyone who knows me knows that like, I take dreams very seriously, right? When I have a dream, I'm always just kind of like, hmm. You know, either I'll write it down or I'll, I'll, I'll always keep it in my mind and pay attention to that. Like I remember a few weeks ago where there's, I had a dream to go, to go to, to, uh, and in the dream I saw my grandmother. And, and immediately when I woke up from my dream, the first thing that came to mind was that I, I was like, you know, I think I need to go see my grandmother. And... Um, Ended up doing it a few weeks later, and it was an incredible experience. But that all, the genesis of all that came from a dream, right? It was a dream where I saw her, and, 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 and by being able to pay attention to, to that dream is the reason why I was able to experience what it is that I was able to experience and to go and spend time with my grandma. And I'm sure there was a lot more things that are going to happen on account of that, but it was because of being able to pay attention to the dream that God had given me, right? Visions are where... There are times where God will place images and vivid ideas in your mind. Things that are so clear, like it's so clear when you see this thing, it's like an image or it's a vivid thing that you're able to just fully and clearly see. And now what happens is that most times whenever we see visions, most times is that we just kind of discard these things. And one of the practices that I do is that whenever these vivid images or ideas come, one of the things that I do a lot of times is I write things down. So I'll always make sure that whenever something vivid is dropped into my mind that I will take the time to go and make sure that I document that thing. Because this is one of the ways in which God speaks to us. He speaks to us through dreams and visions. And there's some things that you'll see and there's some clarity that you will gain that is important for you to go and then be able to just not, again, like everything else, be like, wow, that's so weird. No, it's being able to be attentive and be like, ah, there's something clear, there's some clarity here that I'm receiving, let me go and put that down. And the benefit of that has been that there's been so many great ideas that I've actually executed on account of visions that I have received from God, where he would show you something with such great clarity. And when you begin to start to pay attention to these things, it bears a lot of fruit for you, where you get an idea that allows you to just do something that is remarkable. And that idea doesn't come from anywhere but from him. And so for us, it's being able to pay attention to these things. Hey Amen. Are we together? Are we together? I want to run through these things. There's so many. There's so many things, but we're only going to run through a few of them. Right? One of the other ways through God in which God speaks to us, right? One of the great ways in which God speaks to us, and, and I'm sure I've mentioned this many times before, and you probably notice in a lot of the examples that I give, is that God also speaks to us through creation and nature. Right? In Romans 1.20, it tells us that for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Meaning that through creation and through nature, we are able to see and understand things about God. That God literally uses creation to be able to speak to us and to communicate to us things that are incredibly interesting and complex and things that he wants us to be able to understand. That God speaks to us through nature, right? I mean, the amount of times that God has spoken to me through nature, I mean, just literally, <laughs> maybe if you're in the beginning of this and you had my, my, my cat meowing, <laughs> I have a cat. And literally, I kid you not, I kid you not. The reason why I got that cat is because I felt God leading me to get a cat. I know it sounds weird. <laughs> I felt like God was leading me to get a cat. So I got a cat, right? And the thing is, is that me, I honestly believe, I don't know if no, no one here believes, but me, I honestly believe like there's a reason why this cat is here. Is there to teach me some things, right? And to teach me a couple of things. And I'm sure it's over here, I just like I'm here getting to be better and to be a better man. And Kumbi, it's just because of this nyao over here. This cat is teaching me character. <laughs> 
Right? And so the thing about creation is that within itself, it carries God's glory. That there are things that we're able to understand and learn about God just by observing nature. Right? Just by observing nature. The amount of times when I look at these plants and the things that I learn and the things that God teaches me through being able to look at some of these plants right, is really remarkable. And this is one of the ways in which God speaks to us. And that's why even in the book of Romans, where he says that no one has an excuse because his glory and his, his word is revealed to us even in nature. Even in nature, God speaks to us through nature as well, right? Um, a sixth way in which God uh, speaks to us is through our conscience, right? That there are times where there are certain things that, you know, for example, they are, they are, this, is, this, this probably will happen for you, especially when you come to the knowledge of, 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 of Christ and his saving grace, where they say, as you're going along this journey and walking with him, where there are certain things that you used to be very comfortable doing, you're just fine. Then now all of a sudden they start zumboing you, right? You're just like, my, but I've always done this. Why is this now bothering me? This is God speaking to us through our conscience where there are some things that you used to just comfortably do. You used to hang out with some certain people and you used to just do it comfortably and all of a sudden you now are restless, uncomfortable hanging out with certain people or you're uncomfortable doing certain things that you normally just used to do before. And this is how God speaks to us, that he speaks to us through our conscience, right? Where they used to be okay with certain things that you used to do and now you no longer are. This is also how God speaks to us. A seventh way in which God speaks to us is... Just in the same way that you read in the scriptures, that God also speaks to us through an audible voice. There are, there are times where God will literally speak to us audibly, right? And we see this throughout scripture, right? That he speaks audibly to his people. And we see this time and time again throughout scripture. You know, I remember um, how a few weeks ago, um, I remember going through an incredibly difficult situation that I was going through a couple of weeks ago. And as I was going through that situation, I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, wow, like, why am I so calm in this situation? That I, normally, I wouldn't be this calm when I'm in a situation like this. But anyway, as this situation is happening, I'm, I'm calm and I'm kind of like trying to deal with the situation, but also wondering, why am I so calm? So anyway, after the whole thing kind of like calms down and everything um, is, is now easy, I remember I was sitting at my desk in the office and I remember just sitting there and thinking to myself, I was like, wow, like, why is it? Why am I, why was I so calm in this situation? Like, this is such a crazy situation. Like, why was I so calm? And as I was literally thinking about trying to figure out why it is that I was so calm in this situation, I literally heard a voice say to me, you're getting stronger. You're getting stronger. And I remember when I heard that, almost immediately I began to, you know, like tears began to come out of my eyes because I knew it was the voice of my father. I knew it was the voice of my father in heaven affirming me and basically telling me like, yo, you know, you're getting stronger. That's why you are, you are so calm in this situation. And it's just like, you know, it's like a kind of voice of pride. It was really remarkable. But the point is this, is that, 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 that God still speaks audibly to us, that he still speaks audibly to us. And the great thing is this, is that like, if you remember from last week, that when we, when we, again, as we continue, like I, told you guys spend time with him and as we continue to just um uh, spend time in his presence and in fellowship with him then what happens is that we're able to discern his voice and to literally be like ah that's my father who's speaking to me right and you're able to discern his voice and to and to really understand and hear and, and discern his voice over other voices and to be able to know that that's not the voice of you talking to yourself that's the voice of of god you know and so god does speak to us and he still speaks to us audibly, right? Um, another way in which God speaks to us is that he will speak to us through people, right? God throughout scripture has used prophets, teachers, and different people to be able to speak to others, to be able to communicate things to other people, right? Um, this is why I think it's incredibly important for us to be able to be open to listening to others because God could use anyone to speak to us. He could use anyone to speak to us. However, 
even in as much as God uses people to speak to us, so does the devil, right? So meaning that there are also times where God will use people to speak to us, but also the enemy uses people to speak to us. You know, in Matthew 16, you know, there's a story that is told, which is such a clear representation of this, right? Where in this story where Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say the son of man is, right? This is in Matthew 16. And the disciples then respond to tell him that, you know, people say that, you know, you are a prophet, you are Elijah, you are John the Baptist. So they mention all these different things that, people say that he is right and then jesus asks his disciples but who do you say that i am and at this point in time peter answers and says you are the messiah the son of the living god and then jesus responds to peter and tells him blessed are you simon son of jonah this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood but my father in heaven and i tell you that you are peter and on this rock i will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven and so here jesus calls peter blessed and tells him that he's just that what he just said came from god the father Right now, the thing that's so interesting about this is that literally the next verse, not like the next chapter, the next verse, Jesus begins to explain to his disciples that he's about to suffer many things and to be killed in Jerusalem. And so, Peter, this guy that he has just commended, that he has just commended. Peter goes and takes Jesus aside and begins to rebuke him, saying, Never, Lord, that shall never happen to you. And Jesus turns to Peter and says to him, Get behind me, Satan. Now, <laughs> I mean, the, the reason why this story is so interesting is because one, at one moment, Peter is being commended by Jesus, right, for what he said, being told that he sa- what he said came from God, right? Then he's just like, man, what you just said has come from God. And literally, just a few verses later, He's being told, get thee behind me, Satan. Right? Which is such to me, like such an interesting representation of the fact that 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 people can be used by God and people can be used by the enemy, right? And so, meaning that in as much as yes, God uses people to be able to speak to us, it is important for us to be able to ensure that we don't esteem people so highly. Because if you think about the fact that Peter was so close to him, this was one of his close buddies, right? And the th- there are times where we can esteem people in our lives so highly that we can never imagine that the enemy could also use them to speak to us, right? And so the thing that is super important for us is to be able to have the discernment to know when God is speaking to us through people and when the enemy is speaking to us through people. And it doesn't matter who it is, right? It doesn't matter who it is. Right? It, it could be someone who you look at who's in authority and you're just like, the only th- time this person says anything <laughs> is when it's God who's... No, but it's important for us to be able to understand this and to be able to have the discernment to be able to know. That's why it's super important to go back to the first place where we know how God speaks to us and how he doesn't contradict himself through his word. That it's important for us that in regard to how he uses people to speak to us, to be able to understand that he is able to use people to speak to us. But even still, when people speak to us through him, it is important for us to be able to take those words and to channel them through scripture and to channel them through by scripture, meaning that the written word and being able to be like, is this consistent with scripture? But also being able to just engage discernment and just literally go and ask God, like, is this for me? Is this a word that I need to? then take to heart. You feel me? Amen. So, it's important that in everything people tell us that we're able to validate those things against God's word. All right? Now, number nine. I only have two more left. There's so many. There's many ways that God speaks to us. I just wanted to highlight a few, right, that I'm I'm familiar with. Number nine is, this one is so, this is like a love language, right? And this one is very like, this is for me, <laughs> right? I don't even know. I keep, I keep wondering where I can... Now, in this ninth one is like a, what I call like a unique feeling, all right? And this is what I mean. There's something that I personally experienced, and I'm not sure if this... And you can tell me, please, go into our WhatsApp channel and tell us whether you experience this as well. But there are very... There are, there are some times where God will give me a literal, physical feeling. To get my attention this happens very specific times 
where something is happening and he literally will give me a specific this is the, the way i'm saying this is the, like a like a love language yeah because it's one of those things i know it can't be the same for everyone right but i think one of the, this is one of the unique ways in which god gets my attention right where he'll literally in a situation i'll just be there just mending my own business and then all of a sudden he'll give me this very unique feeling which every single time literally gets my attention to be like okay god what do you want me to take note of here in this place right and i'd be very curious the reason why i dropped this one is because i'm very curious to find out if there's anyone who's listening who also has a similar manifestation i've had this conversation with others theirs is all different and i think this is part of that kind of unique love language that you're able to have with your heavenly father where it's just like you and him have you know that thing for across the room where it's just like they do something and you know what that means this is what for me is my whole kind of unique physical experience um that i have where god will literally give me a very unique specific feeling i i i know that thing to a t that always is for me an indicator of pay attention to something that's happening right love to have to hear what this love language is uh, so get on the whatsapp channel and tell me about this now the final way and in my opinion is one of the things that i i love more than anything is that the way in which god speaks to us is through jesus christ and let me explain how where that what i mean by that in Hebrews 1, from verse 1 to 4, it says, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. Now the thing, the reason why this is one of the most beautiful ways in which God speaks to us, which is through Jesus Christ, is because the thing is, is when we understand that Jesus is the active representation of who God is. He's the ultimate representation of God's nature and character. So meaning, if you remember from the last message that we talked about, where I, I said that learning God's voice is something that we nurture within us. That is something that we, we are able to then, as we spend time with him, that we nurture this ability that we have to be able to hear and discern his voice. And one of the analogies that I gave was that of a child learning their parents' voice. So meaning that as a, as a young child, the first thing that they do is that they first learn the sound of that voice. And they're like, that's mom, that's dad. And then as they continue to grow and begin to understand words, now they're able to understand that when the parent tells them, don't do this, they're able to know what don't do this means. Okay. And so as they're going along, they begin to grow in their understanding of the things that are being communicated by their parents but then at the final the thing that i said is that as we continue to grow that even now that you grow from a place of not just hearing and understanding but even being able to discern intention meaning that you're able to go into a situation and be able to be like because you spend so much time with this person you're able to know this is not something that they'd be happy about, or this is not something that they'd be interested in, uh, about. This happens in a lot of relationships where you're able, as you spend time with this person, you're able to then at, come to a point where you now are able to even understand their intention. You're able to understand their heart and their mind in certain things. To the extent where you, if someone came and asked you, what do you think this person would think? You'd most probably be able to give an accurate representation of, I don't think they'd like something like this, or I don't think... So literally now you've reached to a level of communication where you're not only able to understand and discern what they say, but you're also able to understand and discern even their own intentions in a certain situation. This is what I believe is so beautiful about Jesus Christ is that what Jesus Christ reveals to us is not that it's possible for us to hear the voice of God, to discern God's voice. But when we look at Jesus, what we're able to understand is the heart of God. 
we are able to understand the fullest and clearest picture of who God is by looking at Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is the culmination. That yes, we can have conversations about the, you know, the God of the Old Testament, New Testament, all this God grace, um, judgment, whatever it is. But when we look at Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ, that God speaks to us through Christ Jesus because Jesus Christ is the perfect manifestation and representation of who God is. That when we look at Jesus, we see God's heart. We see God's intention. We see God's motive. We see who God really is by looking at Jesus Christ, right? And so to know Jesus is to know and understand God. And the reason why I'm mentioning this to you is this, is because one of the things that I have made into a practice and a habit in my life is that every single year, at least twice a year, I will go through the Gospels. And the whole purpose of why I go through the Gospels is because the Gospels speak to us very vividly and show us and reveal to us Jesus Christ. That when we immerse ourselves in being able to understand Jesus, in being able to literally look into his life, to be able to discern his words and to understand him, to hear him, to look at him, to be able to delve deeper into his life and into the way he spoke and the things he spoke about, his priorities, even to the extent of how, like we talked about last week, how he would wake up early in the morning to go and pray. That when we look at Jesus... This is God speaking to us that Jesus is the perfect and most incredible representation of who God is. God actively speaks to us through the life and words of Jesus Christ. We are able to understand his to understand his intentions by looking at Jesus. We are able to understand his mind by looking at Jesus. God is always speaking to us through Jesus Christ. That when we look at him, we are able to understand deeply about who God is and what his intention is in any situation and in every single thing that we are able to experience. And so this is part of the reason why I make it a thing to be able to go through the Gospels. Not just simply because it's just like, yeah, it's kind of cool to go. It is because of being able to understand what Hebrew is saying to us. That in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. And so for us to be able to immerse ourselves in being able to understand Jesus Christ. This here, of all the things that I've spoken of over here is how God speaks to us. I believe this to be the most important. That literally, if anything, that when we understand who Jesus is, what he's about, why he does what he does, and literally immersing ourselves into this, it gives us and helps us to understand who God is in totality. And so, my friends, these are a couple of ways in which God speaks to us. There are very many ways in which God speaks to us. And as I said in the first episode, that, it's, that we first begin by being able to have fellowship with him. But it, today's message is really about being able to see the different ways in which God tries to get our attention. And how God chooses to speak to us through so many diverse ways. And especially through his son, Jesus Christ. And I pray that through this message that we would also begin to immerse ourselves in the most important aspect of what it is that we need to understand. It is that we need to understand who Jesus is and what it is that he's about and what everything that he's about and how he speaks to us and how he represents God to us in the fullest extent of who he is. Amen. Amen. Let me bless you guys. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your love and mercy towards us. And I thank you for Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that for those who hear and for those who are listening, that they would understand Jesus. That it is through him that you have spoken to us and continue to speak to us. That it is through him that we see your intention. It is through him that we see your heart. It is through him that we understand your mind. And I pray in Jesus' holy name that for all those who hear that Jesus Christ would be revealed in them 
for the glory and honor of your holy name that we may be able to be just like him by the power of your Holy Spirit. And so, Father, we thank you, we honor you, we lift you up and we magnify your name for you are good and your love and mercy endures forever in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Listen, if this message blessed you, please be sure to share with someone whom you love. Share with a friend, a colleague, anyone. And then also, listen, support us. Support this ministry so that we can be able to make more dope content and be able to spread this message of the kingdom to as many people as possible. And then make sure that you subscribe. Sawa, subscribe. Subscribe, wherever the button, subscribe, subscribe. God bless you guys.